Welcome back to Biomechanics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. So in the previous video, we looked at the most basic torque problem you could have with the elbow joint. Now we're going to build off of that and add in some extra features. And what we're going to be adding in is actually the weight of the forearm. Okay. Uh, so again, let's review the basic features of this kind of problem before we delve into it. And if you need more review on the, how we work the basic problem, go back to the previous video in this playlist. So here's our setup. We've got this vertical line right here. That represents my humerus and everything associated with that. The horizontal line right here is basically your forearm and everything in that. And then this little ball right here, that could represent the hand. And then of course, if I'm holding a weight, like this, okay? And the setup of this is my elbow joint is flexed to 90 degrees, and I'm just holding a weight here. I'm not curling it up and down, I'm just holding this weight here isometrically. And what we're asked to do is, taking into account all these other weights right here, like the, the dumbbell or whatever that is, the weight of the forearm, we're asked to calculate how much force would be required by the elbow flexors to hold up that weight. And generally in this kind of problem, we're going to be neglecting the other elbow flexors with the exception of the biceps brachii. So neglect the brachioradialis, brachialis, etc. All right. So when we work this problem, um, now we're going to be throwing in an extra set of variables because in the previous one, all we had was the force exerted upward due to the biceps. And we had this weight that's being held in the hand. Now we're actually going to take into account uh, the force, or I should say the weight, due to the forearm, because of course our forearm has mass in it. It's got bones, it's got the radius and the ulna, it's got all sorts of muscles in here. It's got the supinator, pronator, uh, flexor and extensor bundle. So it's got all sorts of other tissues as well that have mass. And so in a real life problem, we can't neglect this, although we did in the previous video. Although you'll see problems like that. The other thing that this has associated with it is a distance to the center of mass. Now obviously, with this bicep, it's attaching really just kind of at one point. Uh, this weight right here, even though it's a little bit wider, it's pretty much just one point. Well, where do I, do I have to count every single point along this forearm? Well, no, I'm gonna use what's called the center of gravity. And that's a value that's usually gonna be given to you. And here, uh, the center of gravity is gonna be represented by D sub A. That's the distance of the arm to the center of gravity. So this distance, here's the center of gravity right there, and then the distance, again, just as before, to the axis of rotation. And of course, the force that's exerted by the arm downwards, so the weight of the forearm, we're going to call F sub A, force due to the, the arm, right? And again, we still have the same things as before. We have the force due to the biceps, and the distance of the biceps from the axis of rotation. We have the force due to the weight that we're holding, um, and the distance from that to the axis of rotation, which is our DW. Um, note that generally the weight of the hand is also taken into account uh, through the weight of the forearm. All right? And so I've got all this stuff right here. Um, we can deal with that in a minute. But again, we have our more important formula right here, which is torque is equal to force times distance. And when we're in static equilibrium, that means all the torques have to be balanced, and so they add to be zero. And so our overall formula, and I'll try to get out of the way when I do this, is the sum of our torques has to be zero. Okay? That just means we're going to take each individual torque, torque due to the weight that's in our hand, torque due to the forearm, torque due to the bicep, we're going to add all that together and sum it to zero. And that's going to allow us to solve for our unknown variable, which almost always in this problem is the force that must be exerted by the muscle, in this case the bicep. So, uh, let's first figure out what we would have here in the general formula. So we would have, C, we'd have the torque due to the weight plus the torque due to the forearm, or just arm, plus the torque due to the biceps. And we sum all that together and we would get zero. Now, we got a little bit more work here to do this time, uh, again, because the, the weights of the forearm and the weight itself are not actually given in weight or force units. They're given in mass units. Notice I have the mass, M of the weight, mass, M of the arm. We're going to have to convert those into force units, which means newtons. 
And the way we convert a mass to newtons, assuming the mass is kilograms, is we simply just multiply it by 9.8. Okay, and that is 9.8 meters per second squared if we're being very rigorous. So that means if we multiply 10 kilograms, which is the mass of this weight, times 9.8, we're going to get uh, a force, F sub W, that's the force due to the weight, which is going to be 98 newtons. Okay? That's the same number that we actually had in the previous video. Okay? But we also now have the mass of the, of the arm, that is the forearm. Right? And I'm actually going to come back over here and do this for the sake of space. But again, the mass of the arm is 5 kilograms. Okay? So we would need to multiply 9.8 times 5 kilograms, and that would actually give us 49, 49 newtons. Okay, um, And all these other things, these distances, are in centimeters. Now, if you'll recall from the previous video, or just in general if you know this, um, as long as all of these are in the same distance units, you're good. Okay, um, As long as they're consistent, you don't have to convert anything to meters or whatnot. Uh, but if one of, or more of these was a different unit, let's say this top one was centimeters, and this D sub B was in meters for some reason, uh, that wouldn't work. You'd have to convert one to the other. They all have to be the same units. But as long as they're the same units, you don't actually have to convert these. Um, if you did convert them to meters, if your instructor requires that, then you just divide each of these by 100, and that would give you meter units. I'm going to leave them as centimeter units for, for this purpose. So again, I've got the torque due to the weight, plus the torque due to the arm, plus the torque due to the bicep, and because I'm in static equilibrium, all those torques have to sum to be zero. Let's work through this stepwise. We first got the torque due to the weight. All right? We just calculated the force that it exerts, and that's going to be 98 newtons. However, it's negative. The reason it's negative is because this force is exerted downward, because it's a, it's a weight. It's due to gravity. That means that if I'm holding this weight like this, that would tend to, of course, cause my elbow to rotate downwards. That's a downward torque. Okay? So I have to put a negative sign there. And then I multiply it by the distance that the force is exerted from the axis of rotation, which is always the elbow. And that distance looks like is 30 centimeters. All right? So times 30 centimeters. Plus the torque due to the arm. Okay? Now this one, uh, we calculated that force. It was 49 newtons. However, it's going to be negative because this force is also exerted downwards. In fact, in these problems, just to give you a tip, with very few exceptions, and I can't really think of any that I've ever seen um, in any course, the only force that's exerted upward is due to the muscle. Pretty much everything else you can assume is pointed downward unless you have some weird problem. Right? But again, this is going to be negative. 49 newtons, because that force is exerted downward, and then times the distance uh, to the axis of rotation. And this would have to be given to you. It's the center of gravity. Sorry about that. And the center of gravity of the forearm is 15 centimeters from the axis of rotation, d sub a, which is, of course, the elbow. That's going to be 15 centimeters. And then we have to add on the torque due to the biceps, we don't know what this force is. That's going to be our unknown. In fact, I should put a question there because we don't know what that is. So I have to leave that as F sub B, but that one's going to be positive. Positive because that force is exerted upward. That's what's keeping my elbow in static equilibrium. Because these two forces are exerted downward. So if I had nothing pointed upward, it's just going to drop down. So in order to keep myself in static equilibrium to counterbalance the downward forces, I have to have a force exerted upward to hold my elbow there, all right? So, and then the distance between the bicep and the axis of rotation, that is the elbow, is three centimeters, okay? So I'll be perfectly honest, this is something that you'd probably just want to throw into a calculator. So to be completely honest about this part of it, uh, you'd want to throw that into a calculator. However, I already did that calculation, and if you take negative 98 times 30, plus negative 49 times 15, you get negative 3675. And you have to combine these units because you're multiplying newtons times centimeters and then adding on another newtons times centimeters. So this thing will have units of newtons centimeters. Okay? 
and it's important to keep those units into the very end. And then, of course, we still have the plus force due to the biceps, and then times three centimeters, and then that whole thing equals zero. Okay, so probably the best thing to do at this point would be to add all this right here to the other side. Okay, that's going to allow everything to be positive, and then we can just simply divide through. So this is now algebraic manipulation. So if I add this over to the right side where the zero is, on the left side, I'm simply going to have the force due to the biceps times three centimeters. Okay? And then I'm going to have on this side 36.75 newton centimeters. And again, it's newton centimeters because these numbers I multiplied up here, it's a newton times a centimeter. So it's a complex unit like this. Um, and now what I can do is I can divide both sides through by three. Okay? Again, probably use a calculator to do this when we're doing it in real life on a test. But I'm going to divide both sides through by three centimeters. Now this is something very important. Forces have Newton units. Um, whenever we solved the uh, last problem, again, we ended up with a Newton for unit of force. Here we have 98 Newtons. We have 49 Newtons up here. So when I do this calculation, I, I'm going to assume that my units are going to come out to Newtons. And here's what the nice thing is. I've got Newton centimeter units divided by centimeters. So notice the centimeter here in the denominator will cancel with the centimeters up here in the numerator uh, of Newton centimeters, and that's going to leave only these Newton units. Okay? And then you can, you can punch this into a calculator, and what you'll find is the force into the biceps is going to be 1225 newtons. And again, it came out algebraically as positive, which is exactly what we want. Okay? And that's because, like I mentioned, when we're holding this weight isometrically, we've got these two forces right here that are exerted downward, so they're both going to tend to produce a downward torque. Okay? So to counterbalance that, to be able to hold this isometrically, I have to have a force exerted upward. And that's the force due to the biceps. Okay? Now what you'll notice here is all the numbers I had in this problem versus the previous one are the same. Okay? Uh, I had the, the weight having a distance of 30 centimeters, uh, the bicep had a distance of 3 centimeters, and I kept all the masses and forces the same. The only thing we changed is we added now the mass of the forearm. And that, of course, had a mass of 5 kilograms, so 49 newtons, and then it had a distance from the axis of rotation of 15 centimeters. Now, what you'll notice is if you compare this to the result that we got in the previous video, this is a greater force. Okay? Um, we're going to expect to see that when we count, when we count or take into account, I should say, the weight of the forearm. Okay? Because if we're counting for more weight, the bicep's going to have to exert more force. And I, I don't remember the exact number we got in the previous video when we only accounted for the weight in the hand and the force of the bicep. But the force of the bicep we got there was actually less. Here we see the bicep's going to be required to generate more force in order to counterbalance the weight of this, well, weight, and the weight of the forearm, okay? So we see 1225 newtons in the positive direction, all right? Um, and again, the other thing I wanted to point out, which you're going to see very consistently in these types of problems, is that the bicep is not a very efficient muscle. The, it's part of what we call a third-class lever, okay? And also, in this third-class lever, which is an inefficient muscle to begin with, it's a low mechanical advantage, we see that the point of attachment of the bicep is very close to the axis of rotation. And so in order to generate a large torque, despite having a small distance, you're going to have to have a massive force being generated. Okay? And so what we'll often see is the force due to the bicep can be on the order of 10 times, 15 times greater than the force that's being exerted by any weight that's held in the hand. And so this is just a, a 10 kilogram mass. And so you can imagine that if somebody is just holding a 20 kilogram or 30 kilogram uh, dumbbell in their hand, this force is going to go dramatically up. Okay? So bicep, inefficient muscle, low mechanical advantage, and that's the fact because it's a third class level with point of attachment, very close to the axis of rotation. But again, that's just conceptual aspects of this. But hopefully this 
uh, give you a good understanding of how you actually work this problem. Um, this pretty much covers the major stuff that we're going to look at um, for uh, torque problems for the bicep at least at 90 degrees. Our next step is going to be to change the angle of the bicep to either 30 degrees or 60 degrees. And then we're going to see that uh, we're going to have a lot more angles there. And we're going to have to throw in some trigonometry and so it becomes more complicated. But before we got to that point, we needed to understand all this. All right. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.